As a leader, the stresses of the job can stack up and sometimes feel unbearable. So what do we do when we are at our breaking point and feel completely overwhelmed? For many, unfortunately, masking and ignoring the problem becomes the unhealthy solution. My guest today, Jeff Kubiak, is completely transparent and brave as he shares his battle with alcoholism, his focus on mental health, and how he is transforming his campus to focus on the social and emotional needs of his students and staff. Welcome back, everyone, to Aspire to Lead, where we will be discussing the visions, inspirations, and experiences from top educational leaders. My name is Joshua Stamper, and you can connect with me on Twitter or on Instagram at Joshua double underscore Stamper. All right, Aspire listeners, I am so excited for this interview because I have a very, very good friend on the podcast today, Jeff Kubiak, and I had the fantastic opportunity, it's been a little while, three years now, to meet this fantastic educator and leader in person at Teach Better 19, and it was just a joy. I think I spent like three days with you, buddy. Was it that long? Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome, and got to know you a little bit better, and it was such a fun trip. And right after we had you on the podcast and you had a brand new book at the time, One Drop of Kindness, such a fantastic book. If, if those who are listening do not have this, I have read it to my kids a hundred times. They absolutely love this book. And Jeff, you've written several other books that we're going to talk about. Actually, you have one in the works right now. I don't, this might be breaking news to folks, so I don't want to spill the beans quite yet. Um, but Jeff, for those who are listening, if they haven't heard the other episode, can you just share a little bit about yourself? Yeah. And that was an amazing few days in Ohio that we got to hang out. Yeah. Um, you know, the uh, the Teach Better team killed it. And just to be a part of that uh, initial conference was fantastic. Yeah. You know, this is, I think, my 25th year in education, all of it uh, site based. Um, I'm currently a vice principal in Elk Grove School District, which is South Sacramento. I work uh, with incredible people. I have been a principal. I've been a dean of students. I taught grades four, five, and six. And yeah, I've written um, two books and I'm currently almost done with my third project, which we will probably touch upon. But uh, I have two amazing kids and an incredible support of beautiful wife, love and life. You know, my, my daughter's a senior in high school. My son's 13, eighth grader. And we're just trucking along, <laughs> trucking along. Yeah, I love the fact that you're so incredible with your family and um, I know they're such a rock bed for you personally and uh, that's kind of where I want to start our conversation is just you know the last couple years has really been tough for a lot of people I don't know about your area but I know in Texas and the people I've worked with like mental health has been a big topic and something that's been a struggle for so many folks and not just students but with staff also and I want to know just kind of what you've been dealing with in, in your area, with your school, with yourself and mental health. And what are some things that you do now personally to, you know, help your well-being every single day? Yeah, you know, Josh, it's not even like a crisis or criti- critical mass anymore. I think it's just it's an embedded problem that's not being addressed yeah. worldwide, of course, but in the United States. And and, and, and it's not to blame anyone, but I think there's been, you know, so many layers of it and so many things are broken and that includes people. You know, we've got teachers that are working their asses off that might have family members that are sick or unhealthy. And we have students that have seen inordinate amount of trauma, things that the 57 year old Jeff Kubiak hasn't even seen. And these kids are eight, nine and 10 years old now we're dealing with a financial situation, right? It's, you know, guy Gungus inflation. And so they're, you know, it's like pulling at every end and these kids have to brunt and bear the weight of it. Right. And that's, that's horrible. But when, if you have a solid family and friends and you have a job and a roof over your head, like you and I are blessed to, then, then gosh, you know, we're okay. You know, speaking of that, it's just, you try to support your teachers. You try to support all your staff members your students. And then you and I, we come home and we're exhausted. Then we got to be super dad, super husband. Yeah. And where does that leave Jeff who needs to go to work in another, you know, 10, 12 hours back to how you're going to take care of those 700 plus students. Yeah. So what'd that look like? Yeah. So for me, today is 966 days of sobriety, right? And congratulations, uh, by the way. Thank you. You know, it's, I'm in awe of it. And 
people that don't know people that are recovering or going through the process it may not eh, whatever you know two years eight months nine or six days who cares but it, it's it's huge it's enormous for me and I couldn't do it without my amazing friends and family and to see the Jeff Kubiak of three years ago versus now I'm trying so hard to be the father I wasn't and the husband I wasn't and the person to my own self that I wasn't it's ironic that Shortly after my book came out, I got some criticism that, you know, how are you, Jeff, writing a book about kindness when you're not even a kind person? And that was, that was crazy, you know, but people change and I, I forgive myself. I forgive others. I, I've changed a lot. Mm -hmm. I've got a long way to go. But once I start changing and accepting who I've become, I can have better conversations and I can do what I'm supposed to do and look after all those students at school, like throw out today. You know, I got kid walking out of class, teacher asked them, come on back in, you know, the kids aggro leaves, tries to get back in the door. So you got to go diffuse that then. Yep. Okay. Mr. K, can you come over to X? So then you got, a, you know, another kid that's blowing out over there. Then you got a kid on the blacktop Then you got a teacher who, is freaking out because they get a, a phone call home. And then, you know, it's just constant. And then you get someone yelling at the office ladies, right? And it's just, it, it just balloons. And then, you know, everyone has to go home and then face what they're facing and then come back. And so unless someone wants to have a conversation with me and share, how can I support, right? And so, you know, you, you want to be the empath, and at least be there and listen. I hear you. I, I don't understand or know what you're going through, but I do hear. Mm -hmm. Now I got to put my compassion hat on. You know, gosh darn it, Josh, how can I help you? Can I do this, 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 right? And and be genuine. Like, what can I do to support you? Yep. And now that I've done that, okay, where can I go for those resources? And I'm blessed that I have a school that's resourceful, but you get these kids that walk home across across these busy streets, don't know where they're going to eat. So they hopefully can make it till the next morning when they come back at 720 for breakfast. Yep. And then the day starts again. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we're going to talk about the the student aspect because, I mean, what you just outlined is bringing back a lot of memories because that was, you know, nine years of my life uh, hearing that on the walkie talkie every single day. And before I touch on that, though, I want to talk about the mental health piece because so many of my listeners are leaders, and that is a reality every single day, right? Of, you know, as a leader, we have to be available to everyone and and serve, but we have to be in the right mental capacity. So, are there some strategies that you do at home to help you prepare to be the best leader you possibly can the following day? One hundred percent, and that's it's been some different types of reading you know the obstacle is the way is an amazing book that i've read and then you know i've i've really gotten into and followed stoicism right and so keeping my composure and taking my time and maybe stepping back even and trudging through because that's what we have to do go cover someone's class or go help a kid out that just heard terrible news and then also I've focused a lot more, you know, being sober is challenging in itself, but when you have all sorts of other things going on, there's even more. And so my own health, you know, getting on the Peloton, I yeah. walk the dog every morning. So, you know, at school, I walk 18 to 20,000 steps a day. Yeah. Then I, you know, try to ride 30 to 60 minutes. I do a lot of cold plunging and some meditation and I try to eat well. Yeah. Right. And so and then laugh like you know my the family that i am blessed to live with we were like doofuses man we we're, <laughs> we're 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 silly we're crazy we, we we have fun and you know we we make it a point to eat at least three four meals together a week yep. um you know having a senior in high school that's part of student government it's crazy especially with homecoming week right now mm -hmm. but you know it's important for us to sit down and break bread and talk and laugh and get frustrated and have someone leave the table and then 15 minutes later come and apologize and reconnect and play board games. And because the years of all my drinking and verbal abuse and all that are gone and I can only be better today. 
And, you know, and it's so cliche, right? But it's so true. Like you have to take care of yourself to take care of others. Duh. Well, okay, then why don't we do it? Why, yeah. why am I still gaining weight if I don't drink alcohol? Right. And why are people still going to the hospital and, you know, having their hair fall out and, and, and all these things? Well, there's a problem. Chronic stress will do that. And trauma, you know, we talked about that a little bit before you were talking about that in regards to students. And I, I kind of want to direct our conversation there because you're correct. I, our students are going through things that we can only imagine that have to come to school every single day. And honestly, their top priority is not learning. It, it's to survive. And, you know, as educators, we have to start asking that question. What are we going to do to make sure that we're providing for these students and that their needs are being met? So that way they can learn. So I want to know about your school. What are some things as a leader on your campus that are helping your educators to be more trauma informed? Sharing stories. And, and, you know, we, we have our amazing teachers have their PLCs and they actually do, they have agendas and they talk and they break, bring up student issues and our MTSS meetings, the students that we speak about and just walking the halls, checking in. Hey, do you need a break? Do you, do you need to use the restroom? You need to go make a phone call or whatever. And, you know, the teacher that's got an emergency at home that has to be gone for eight days when you don't have subs. So you're pulling other teachers in, and, yep. you know, try, trying to, to do, you know, little things and bringing in a treat or just, just to check in, like give that ear, give a smile. Because when Josh sees that I'm doing that to him, he knows I care and knows that I'm going to back it up. Hey, Jeff, can you come cover my class? Yeah, boom, I'm there. And we do that all the time. Paul Cordero, the principal of the school is phenomenal. And we are always doing what we can to cover someone. To If we see a need, you fill it. Every day I'm, I'm, I'm picking up garbage, I sweep. I'm in the cafeteria recycling food, got my gloves. I mean, it's like, you just do because it has to be done. And you do it with a smile and you just, you really have to understand that those teachers are in the room with 25 to 30 kids that you're right. They can't sit still. They can't attend the curriculum because maybe they're two, three years behind. Yep. They don't, they don't know what your calming circle is or, you know, how to write a three paragraph essay right now. That's not that they care about. They heard shots at their house last night or, you know, someone got put in jail or they have to move out and move in with another family. They don't, you know, they don't have clean clothes. Like yep. who gives a crap about, you know, learning the freaking Pythagorean theorem when like they have holes in their shoes. Right. And so maybe I have to go down the street and go to this amazing, uh, fantastic resource that gives me shoes for the kids. So um, it, every day is different. Every day is crazy, but every day is so fulfilling. But I mean, I'm worn out. How are the teachers chugging along? Right. That's the piece, right? As far as a leader, you know, you're every day reaching every kid where they're at, but then you're also doing that with your staff. A lot of times as leaders, we talk about the students because students are, are everything, but at the same point, like our teachers are so important and sometimes they get forgotten. And I, I love the fact that in your answer, you're talking about both. You're talking about being a resource, not only for the students walking into your building, but those who are serving them every single day, which are the teachers. Yeah. And 750 students, 35 teachers, plus 20 plus 30 other staff members, right? I mean, everywhere you go, you see someone that's going to need something. Mm -hmm. And I can't give every single thing that you need at that time but i can give you something yep. i can give you time i can give you love i can give you a few minutes of me and maybe i can give you a break or a resource or something right but that that's just who we have to be you have to give of yourself so others can receive and give as well mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk about another topic that you're passionate about. It's something that you've also written about in a children's book called It's Me, but you have started this practice called Equity Walks, and I'm just so curious about what this practice is and how it's impacted your campus. Well, you know, 750 students is 750 needs times everything we need, right? And then all your teachers as well. So does my library have every type of book for every type of reader? 
Do we have, you know, picture only books? Do we have Braille? Do I have things that my deaf students um, can attend, you know, can check in to? I mean, so are we equitable everywhere we go? And so equitable in our access, equitable in our, you know, libraries and curriculum and our playground. Do we have everything for every child that has um, a challenge or a need there? Is the equipment all okay? Um, do we have gender equity in our, you know, our toilets and our restrooms and our classroom doors? And are we having conversations that might be critical and crucial and difficult conversations with our kids about making sure we are seen and heard? And it's, you know, that 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 can't be stressed enough because to be colorblind or race blind or whatever blind then we're not meeting those needs and we're not being equitable and do the teachers have the silly little supplies that they need right and who whoever thought that like teachers run out of pencils and paper well yeah they do but even like the, it's the little teeny things. And so kind of looking at your, your campus globally and then super finite, yep. ensuring that every single person that comes on that campus feels included, feels welcome and feels that they have a voice. And so that goes with the parents who drop off in the morning, parents who pick up, do they have what they need? Yeah. Yeah. Our community is very diverse, just like mine. And that's something that we had to work on at our school too, is, you know, I, and I love how you set this up, right? I mean, you're going from carpool to the front of the building, to the office, to your hallways, classrooms, library. I mean, touching every part of the campus to say, is this reaching every single person that we're serving? Yeah. And when, when they ask you, Hey, Mr. K, do you have a blank? Whoa, yep. I have no clue but you know what i'm going to find out and so then right you're on the phone you're on the email you're on the text and you're finding out hey do we have a blank i'm like oh my god i've never even thought of that and so then because josh gives me this need now i can fulfill this or at least figure out gosh darn it there's a void let's let's fill that void and, and get to the next step because we we have to Right. And it was so cool. I was jumping rope with third graders today at lunch on the double rope. And there's some some kids that have never done it. I pulled in some kids that are super quiet. The kids that probably get missed once in a while. And this girl jumped once yesterday. Today, she jumped four times. And it was like Herculean effect. It was like, <laughs> she was so stoked and, you know, everyone's cheering for her. and a couple other kids are, you know, getting into the thirties and forties, but we had, so our recess at the end of the day is third and sixth grade mixed and these sixth grader boys coming over with these third grade little girls and they're all cheering and clapping and singing and making up songs. And, I, and it's like, wow, you know, I like to see these kids smile as they go line up who probably didn't smile two days ago because maybe I didn't notice them. Sure. But like, gosh, dang it. That is like, that's it, man. That is it. I love it. Yeah. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. You can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcast. Now let's get back to the episode. You have a brand new book that you are constructing called Monsters Have Manners. I want to learn a little bit about this because I'm such a fan of your other books and I can't wait for this resource to be put out. Thank you. Um, you know, my, my, my son, who's now 13, used to love drawing monsters when he was like 10 and 11. He would dabble and he, he didn't understand how good of an artist he was. And so I had an idea for a book. I just kind of storyboard some stuff and started writing and i was like god Braden, i gotta use your your pictures these are epic he was really really and so got excited and, you know got his whole collection and then i used them and kind of storyboarded and wrote it out and then um amanda fox who uh started um her own little publishing house just uh came out with a book called marker town and then she just recently uh partnered with teacher goals and they're going to publish my book. And so Braden's work has been digitized and all the illustrations are coming to life. And so it's a story about a kid that's just 
can't think of anything but monsters and he wants to be like a monster because he thinks they you know they spit everywhere they fart they burp they rawr they're mean they're bullies <laughs> but no deep down you never knew this but monsters do have manners and you will see why so it's really cool it's a neat project you know to be able to have it with your kid and you know Braden's super stoked because his name's going to be on a book oh, and for sure and it's it's a beautiful the art is just beautiful and so it's going to be a fun story and you know it's just it's about helping people maybe think differently and becoming better that's the kind of work i like to do so yeah. i'm excited so a couple months we'll we'll be out there so yeah. very cool well that's super cool too that Braden gets to be a part of that and I can't imagine being a 13 year old and <laughs> having your artwork in a, an actual <laughs> book. That's quite the experience for him and talk about empowering. Uh, yeah, that's totally. be really a cool life lesson for him too. So stoked about the book. I'm so happy that you get to have your son, a part of that project. And uh, we'll make sure that we, you know, as soon as that comes out that I'm, you know, sharing out with everyone that the book is finally here and published and they can get their hands on it. Buddy, we're getting toward the end of our conversation and I always love asking my guests as far as practical steps for our aspiring and current leaders. So if there's something they can do tomorrow or next week to enhance their leadership journey, what would you advise them to do? Practice intentional presence. Mm. And if I'm going to actually make the effort to come into your classroom, Josh, and say, what can I do? I sure as heck better walk that talk, right? Because it, it can't be empty lip service and it's what's needed right now you know the word time is so important but it's so overused but it it's all we have and we can't control it so we sure as heck better make good use of it mm -hmm. and if i can just intentionally give you my time and my presence to figure out what i can do better to support you and if i can't do it someone else will hopefully be able to help me find the way to help you. So that's um, because hopefully someone's going to do that to me as well. And yeah. that's only going to make me feel empowered. It's going to make me feel better about myself. It's going to want me to return and it's going to help me want to return. And also I have a little bit more maybe to give to others and to those students and people who are going to need me. So Jeff, how can people connect with you on social media? I, I love using Twitter and that's at Jeffrey Kubiak on the Instagram at Jeff Kubiak author. And then same thing on Facebook at Jeff Kubiak author. You can find one drop of kindness there. That's all the things and Jeff Kubiak.com yep. has all sorts of freebies and things like that. So reach out, check me out. I'll do the same for you, but um, it's always good to see and hear from you, my man and uh, <laughs> to connect so. for sure. So I will have all those links in the show notes. Please make sure that you're connecting with Jeff. And buddy, it is it's a true honor to call you my friend. And I'm so proud of the work that you've done, that you are focusing on yourself, getting the mental aspects where they need to be. You are such a, a wonderful servant. And I, I'm just so happy that we got to connect again and, and have you on the Aspire to Lead podcast. Thank you, man. I am God blessed as you are. And uh, it's it's fantastic journey to be on with you, my friend. Before we end the program, just a few reminders. Please make sure that you're helping out the podcast by hitting the subscribe button on any podcast application. And then also jump on Apple Podcasts and throw in a rating and review. That would be so helpful. We're going to do a drawing each month. So please make sure that you have your Twitter or Instagram handle in the body of the review so I can reach out, DM you, and get your address to send you a signed copy of Aspire to Lead. Again, I appreciate everyone listening and supporting this show, and I look forward to next week as I have a special guest, Rose Griffin, who works with students with autism and works with them in regards to communication.